Somebody there. I'm done with one more C4. 
This one was in a spot so narrow, I had to cross. What's up, Jack? Jack, it must be so nerve-wracking to defuse a bomb. Yeah, I'd say so. Okay, that was a stupid thing to say. Sorry. That's all right. It's just that I've never been trained in this stuff. You okay? Are you feeling well? I almost threw up a few times. Oh, Jack. But I'm okay. It's not like I'm in this alone. Oh, yeah, that's true. What do you think about when you're diffusing those things? I don't think so much as remember. And I know that I need to resist that and keep my mind blank. I can't let myself be overwhelmed by the fear. So, am I a part of what you try not to remember? <sighs> I was just kidding, but I guess this isn't a good time for that. No, it is. And I do think about you. I'm trying to remember what's so special about April 30th. Any success? No, not yet. You need to stay alive so you can. Okay, that's a deal. Raiden, don't get yourself worked up. It's safer to take out the enemy first, then look for the bomb. Don't even think about searching for the bomb while looking over your shoulder for the enemy. Tell me a little more about Dead's... Vamp is a member. What do you know about that strength? Fat man. Supp Pliskin, what do you know about still? Pliskin, SEAL Team. Pliskin, you seemed pretty focused on the na- Hey Pliskin, were you really a SEAL? That's what I told you. The cardboard box that you have is ideal for fooling your enemies. It's a very important tool for infiltration missions. Really? Of course. I can't begin to count the number of agents whose lives were saved by a cardboard box. You mean everyone's using them? Look, I'm not exaggerating when I say the success of your mission hinges on how you use that cardboard box. Huh. But in the end, a cardboard box is only made of paper. Handle it with care or it won't be of much use to you. Treat your cardboard box with care. Take care of the box and it'll take care of you. Don't think of it as just another box. Treat it with love. Don't be rough, okay? Shoot a fire extinguisher. Ryden, Stillman is a top... Make doubly sure you stay out Colonel, do you really think they'll blow up? If the big shell... Colonel, who are...
Colonel, who exactly... Make doubly sure... Tell me what you know about... Right. I trust that you don't actually believe what that guy Pliskin told you, right? I believe him. There's something about him, like... like an iron will. Enough to trust. Raiden. Hmm. He's not included in the simulation. Don't trust him, ever. You got it? Roger that. Raiden, how is Pliskin doing? Looks like he's doing fine. Stillman said it too. There's something strange about that guy. Don't let your guard down. Understood? Colonel, do you think the terrorist ringleader is really Solid Snake? Yes, I do. But during the Shadow Moses in... That tanker accident that happened over there two years ago, the t Send the replacement guard for the area. Understood. Uh, uh, Dispatching uh, reinforcements to Strani. Exercise extreme caution. No, this isn't happening. Jack, you have to answer me. Jack! Jack!
What's up, Jack? Jack, do you remember the day we met? I'm kind of busy right now, Rose. <laughs> You're right, sorry. I do remember. It was right after I transferred to New York. There are all these tourists around you, in front of the Federal Hall. A group of middle-aged Japanese ladies came up and asked me which building it was that King Kong was climbing in the movie. I said it was probably the Chrysler building. And then you showed up and started mouthing off. You were like, no, it's the Empire State. I said the Chrysler building was in Godzilla. <laughs> we started arguing, and I forgot all about the tourists. I was insisting that I was right, and you were doing the same. The next thing we knew, the Japanese women had gone away, and we ended up going to the Skyscraper Museum to see who had the better recall. We argued all the way to Battery Park. And for nothing. Since the museum was closed, we went our separate ways from the museum. And then I found you again by coincidence out in the base corridor. An amazing coincidence that we were actually working at the same place. That night we went up to the top of the Empire State. It was so beautiful. I could look down on the Chrysler building from 120 stories above ground. I felt overwhelmed. I didn't care anymore who was right. And that was our first date. We watched King Kong in your apartment a bunch of times that night. Didn't sleep till morning. Hmm. If it weren't for that coincidence, we wouldn't be together. I know. I'm sorry, Jack. I'm taking up your time again. What? Take care. Ryden, I'm done with one more C4. This one was in a spot. I've taken care of that annoying fly. What's the situation over there? Puzzling. I saw a man dressed like a ninja just now. Ninja? It's the only way to describe it. A kind of cyborg ninja complete with a sword. What? Are you hiding something from me? Olga, are you sure it wasn't an Arsenal Tengu? Don't be a fool. Think I wouldn't know the difference? I've never seen field gear like that ever. All right. We'll intensify patrols. Anything else? Actually, one more thing. You'll find it hard to believe, though. I saw a man hiding under a cardboard box. Where? On the connecting bridge to Shell 2. Hmm. So you believe me this time? I've seen someone use that box trick before. We'll lay a trap on the Shell 2 connecting bridge. Over and out, then. Freeze! You must be one of Dead Cell. Of course not. What a thing to say. Drop your gun! Not a chance. I saw a female soldier. Russian. Must be Olga Gerlukovich. How do you know? Unlike you, I've been briefed. She's not a dead cell? No. She commands a Russian private army. They must be the ones patrolling the big shell. That's right. She's led the group ever since her old man, Colonel Gerlukovich, died. Watch yourself with her. She's a tough one. That pistol you have is a SOCOM. It's a 45 caliber offensive handgun designed for the American Special Ops Command. With 12 rounds of 45 ACPs, it has outstanding stopping power. The SOCOM has a minimum service life, averaging over 6,000 rounds, and has a five round group capacity that extends within a 1.4 inch radius. It's a bit large, but the SOCOM is a gun you can trust. 
It also comes equipped with a laser aiming module. A suppressor can be attached to the SOCOM to silence gunshots. You should try to find one. Raiden, don't ever turn your back on that Olga woman. Olga Gerlukovich, daughter of Colonel Sergei Gerlukovich, ex-Gru and former Spetsnaz commander. She's the leader of Colonel Gerlukovich's private army that's been wandering around the big shell. Those men were gathered by Colonel Gerlukovich. Following his death, she inherited his command and now exercises full control. Her father's name was widely respected throughout the old Soviet regime, and he was the goal of just about every military man. Why would a respected soldier become a leader of those cutthroats? The collapse of the Republic resulted in a lot of unemployed soldiers. Most found themselves suddenly cast out into the civilian world, hopelessly lost. The colonel took these men in. He organized a mercenary army and led his men from battle to battle in various disputed regions around the world, hoping that one day he would rebuild his homeland. Rumor has it that during the Shadow Moses incident, he planned a rendezvous with Liquid Snake's men and assist in their uprising. I assume that the revolt figured into his reconstruction plans for the Soviet regime. I also heard that Ocelot, Liquid's right-hand man, was an old friend of the colonel's back in the old days of the Soviet Union. In any case, Olga inherited her father's military genius and has become a force to be reckoned with. She was born and raised on the battlefield, and she's as tough as she looks. Not my ideal choice for a date. You sound like you've met her. No, I haven't had the pleasure. Just remember what I said. Don't turn your back on her. Tell me a little more about Dead Cell. Dead Cell was a... Raiden, Stillman is a top-notch explosives technician. Follow his orders and disarm the explosives. Okay, but exactly who? There are still bombs in that area that haven't been disposed of. Search carefully. You won't be able to see the bombs with a quick glance. Search carefully with the first-person view. Try to look under things. Look everywhere. There are still bombs in that area that haven't been disposed of. Search carefully. You won't be able to see the bombs.
Raiden here. The C4 reported on the roof of Strut E has been taken care of. Explosives were planted on the Harrier 2 stationed on the roof. This is all wrong. This is something only an amateur would do. What do you mean? All the bombs that have been found so far don't appear to be in the right kind of locations. And the quantity of explosives isn't sufficient either. Even Fat Man can make mistakes, right? No. There's something else going on here. Get a move on with the disposal, right? I've got a bad feeling about this. Do you think it's a trap? I don't know. But I'm gonna tell Pliskin to watch his back, too. Just hurry. One more bomb diffused. There was one I managed to find only because I took a good look in first-person view. You should try it too. Well done. It looks like there are no more bombs in that strut. Now, head for the other struts. Stillman, tell me something about that man. Well, to start, he was born the son of a clockmaker, neglected by his parents and without friends. It seems that he spent a lot of time by himself in his father's workshop. Maybe that was the reason, I'm not sure, but apparently he has had a tremendous fascination with clock mechanics since he was a child. It was at the age of 10 that a guidebook that he found on the internet changed his life forever. That guidebook served as a basis of his eventually piecing together an atomic bomb. It was from there that he came to be known as Fat Man. And soon enough, there was no one associated with bombs that didn't know his name. In a sense, Fat Man was a hero. Although what he did was recognized only by those in the trade, I'm sure that it served to greatly stir the ego of the teenage boy at the center of it all. But he leaves his mark nowhere else. Apparently, he was hated and shunned by everyone in school. So he went on to focus all his energy on explosives. He scorned the reality that surrounded him, and instead chose to embrace a world that would easily grant him recognition. Well, to be sure, it never amounted to anything more than, say, occasionally bringing a gun into school. Eventually, Fat Man came to Indian Head, the exercise training facilities of the Naval School Explosive Ordnance Disposal at which I was a lecturer. He absorbed all kinds of knowledge, as if he hungered for bombs. Close to 20% of the students at Indian Head flunk out of what is truly a hellish curriculum. Despite this environment, he achieved extraordinarily high marks that were without precedent. After leaving Indian Head, he joined up with Nest, said to be the most accomplished bomb disposal unit. It was there that he apparently got into some trouble. What exactly? You got me, but Fat Man was definitely not cut out for group operations from the very start. Having been ousted from Nest, he was picked up by Dead Cell which was already becoming notorious for being a motley crew of sorts. It seems that it was through surprise attack maneuvers later conducted by Dead Cell that Fat Man completely subdued his former companions from Nest. While being the most peculiar individual among my students, he was also the most talented. Be sure not to underestimate him. Are we clear? Stillman. I heard you made quite a name for yourself in the bomb disposal field. <laughs> Nothing of the sort.
Raiden, Stillman is a top-notch explosives technician. Colonel, what do you know about that female soldier, Olga? Olga Gerlukovich. Just like that guy said, she commands a Russian private army. Do you know anything else? Anything else? Yeah, anything else. Why are you concerned about her anyway? You know... Jack? No, 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 it's not like that. <laughs> I'm joking. I'll look into her for you. Good luck. Make doubly sure you stay out of the enemy sight. If the radar goes offline, the sensor is useless. The C4... Jack, do you need to save? You're looking pretty good. Yeah? I wonder how Lieutenant J.G. Pliskin is doing. Well, he's doing pretty good, too. Oh, really? I'm glad. Why are you so worried? Huh? About Pliskin. Well, I mean, he's defusing the bombs along with you. If he screws something up, you'll be... I guess so. He'll be all right, I'm sure. Don't worry about it. Okay. Hang in there. <laughs>